Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in the second part of this series, I'm going to show you how to create animated clouds in the background and a glowing moon. In the next video, I'll show you how to draw some buildings in perspective using the guides function in Grace Pencil. So if you find this content helpful, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So I've got the file where I left off last time and I do want to make a couple of changes to this before we get started on the clouds. I decided that I thought Batman was a little too bright and vivid, so I wanted to change some of his colors. This is a good example of why I prefer using materials over color attributes, because I can quickly go in and make changes to his colors without too much effort. So if I click on Batman, and I click on the Materials tab, you can see I have the Batman colors here. So if I click on Batman Blue and click in here, I can change that and instantly change the color in the drawing. So I'm going to change the hex value from its current one to 4C5C85. You can see that's a little bit darker. So I'm going to click on Batman Skin and change that to FCCCB5. Then I'll click on Batman Skin Shadow and change that to A8807D. Okay, I think that looks good. He's a little bit darker now. So I'm going to hit Control Tab on my keyboard and I'm going to choose Object Mode from the pop up menu. Now I'm in object mode, I want to hide Batman. Now I want to add a color to the background as a base for our clouds. So while in object mode, I'm going to hit Shift A on my keyboard to bring up the Add menu. Hover over Mesh, click Plane, and click in the viewport to finalize it. Now if you don't have this menu on the top right, you can hit N on your keyboard to open it. So within that, I want to click on the X rotation and change that from 0 to 90. And you can see we're our plane in the center of the viewport. So I'm going to click it to highlight it, and you can see it's yellow around the edges. I'm going to hit S to scale it, and I'm going to choose X to constrain it to the X axis. So S, X, and I can bring that out. And I'm going to do it again, but in the Z, so S, Z. Now in the outliner, I'm going to double click on the name plane and change it to background. Now I'll left click and grab it to drag it up into the collection with Batman. Now currently I know the plane is at the origin of Blender, but I don't want that. I want it to be back a little bit because my objects are going to be kind of in layers like you would see in Photoshop. So I want the background color, then we'll have the moon, then clouds, then eventually I'll have buildings, and then I'll have Batman. So first off, you can see that I have keyframes down here in the timeline and that my locations are yellow. And that's because we have auto keyframing on. So it's this dot right here in the timeline. I want to click that to uncheck it. Then I'll left click and drag to select the keyframes and hit delete to remove those. You have to be careful about auto keyframing. Sometimes I forget it's there and then my timeline's filled up with keyframes that I don't need. So to move this backwards, I want to click on it and then in location, I want to click on the Y and type in 0.1. You can see it looked like it shrank a little bit and that's because it moved backwards in the viewport slightly. So now with that selected, I want to go down here to the materials tab, click new to create a new material. I want to click on the base color, which is currently white. I'm going to go to hex, and I want to change that to 2C4253. Now we can't see it in my viewport now because I'm currently in solid mode. So if I click on rendered mode, now we can see the color. I think you can also see that material preview. So I'll leave it in material preview for now. Now that I've got my color set, I want to draw the moon. To do that, I need to hit Shift A on my keyboard to bring up the add menu. Go to Grease Pencil, click on Blank. I'm going to double click on the name G Pencil and change it to Moon. I'm going to drag it up into my collection. Then I'm going to hit Control Tab and select Draw Mode. Okay, before I create the Moon, I'm going to go to the Materials Properties. And when I created the Moon Blank Grease Pencil object, you can see it gave us one material, black. I'm going to double click in there and change that to Moon. And then down here, I want to turn off Stroke, and I want to turn on Fill. I want to click in the base color, and I want to change Alpha to 1. Then with the hex selected, I want to type in FCF6DD. Now you can see we have a very light, faint yellow color. Now with Moon selected and the Moon material, I want to ensure I have the circle selected. And in Draw Mode, I want to left click and drag while holding Shift to create a perfect circle. I'm going to hit Enter to finalize it. So if I scroll around, you can see it's just barely in front of that background. So 
that zero on my numpad to come back to my view. Now one issue with this is I know that the moon is sitting on the object origin now and I need the clouds to be in front of the moon but if I bring it in now it'll be in the same place as the moon. So I'll go back to object mode and I'll click on background and you can see I moved it by 0.1. So I'm going to click on the moon and I'm going to change it to 0.09. Okay, move back just a little bit but it's just barely in front of that. Now with the moon selected I'm going to click on the visual effects properties and I'll click on add effect and blur and I just mainly want to show this to show you that these visual effects are here there's a couple of different options but um, I probably won't use this in my animation but I want to show you what it looked like so if I click in size X and Y and change 50 to 75 we'll have a blur on the moon now, I know you can't see it now but if I change from material preview to rendered you can see how that looks so for now I'm gonna hide mine but that's there if you need it. So now I want to create the clouds. And to do this, I need another plane. So while in object mode, I'll hit Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Click in the viewport to finalize it. And then in the rotation X, I want to change it to 90. Okay, I want to click on it to select it. And I'll hit S and X to scale it in the X axis. I'm at SZ to scale it in the Z axis. Okay, I'm going to go up here to the outliner and change the name from plane to clouds. I want to drag it into the collection. So now I'm going to click on it and in location I want to change the Y to 0 0.08. So now it's still in front of the moon and the background but it is behind Batman. So if I turn him on we can see it's not affecting him. If I select him, you can see his Y is at zero. So I'm going to turn him back off and click on clouds. Now on the timeline down here, I'm going to left click and drag to bring that up. And if I left click down here, you can see I've got another timeline available. So I'm going to scroll out to reduce the size of this. And then on this tab, I want to change it from timeline to shader editor. Now I'm going to create a material for the clouds. So I'm going to go down to the materials tab and hit new. I'm going to change the name to clouds. You can see when I did that in the shader editor, we can now see there are nodes added. And I'll be using both of these nodes for this. So I'm actually going to bring this up a little more and reduce the size of this. We'll be using the Prinzled BSDF node and then the Materials Output node, which is what we already have here when we created the material. So I need to add a few more. And then I'll explain what we're doing with them. So the first thing I want to add is the Texture Coordinates node. And to add a node, hit Shift A while hovering in the shader editor. Click in the search box and start typing the name of your node. So this is Texture Coordinator. Now if I click on that, it brings it out and I click again to drop it. The next node I need is Shift A, Search, Mapping Node, then Shift A, Search, Noise, and then shift A search color ramp okay now I'm going to hook these up and then I'll explain what they do so I'm going to hit generated to vector on the mapping and from mapping to noise texture I want to click vector to vector so I'm just left clicking and dragging and it creates that line so from noise texture to factor and then I'll finish this connection in a second. So the texture coordinate node tells Blender where to place a texture on an object. And in this case, it's our cloud object, which is a plane. So the mapping node tells Blender where to place that. And we'll actually be using it to create the animation. And then the noise texture is going to break up the material. And we'll be using that to create the cloud look. And then the color ramp will tell Blender what parts of the material to be transparent and what parts to be solid. So right now it's black and white. And I'm about to add another node that will tell it the white will be transparent. So to finish this out, I'll hit Shift A again and type in transparent BSDF. I'll drop that here. 
And then I need a mix shader to mix the principled BSDF with the rest of these. So Shift A, mix shader. So now I'm gonna hook the rest of this up. I'm gonna disconnect materials output by clicking and dragging that. Then I'm gonna drag this over here because it'll be our last node. Then I'm gonna drag my principal BSDF to the first shader on the mix shader. Then I'm gonna drag my transparent BSDF to the second shader input on mix shader. Then I'm gonna drag the color ramp color to the factor on the mix shader. And then I'll connect the shader from the mix shader to the surface on the material output. Okay, so now I need to make some changes to these. Now the principal BSDF will be our base color. So I'm going to click on the base color option. And in the hex, I'm going to change this to 50606C. Okay, and that's a lighter color blue. So now I'm going to change all the other values of the principal BSDF to zero, except for alpha, and I'll leave that at one. So you can just click in here and drag. So I want all of these to zero, except for alpha. And emission strength, I'll bring that down to zero. So now the principal BSDF shader is our base color for the clouds. And it's being mixed with the mix shader which includes the transparency BSDF. And it'll be telling it what's white will be transparent. So let me bring this up so you can see these more. And let me just say, it took me hours to figure out what was gonna work for me. So if you make changes to this or you're starting a new one and you get frustrated, don't. Because it took me a very long time for me to figure out what I wanted this to look like and how to make it work. So if you get frustrated, just realize it can be time consuming and a lot of trial and error. So the first thing I want to do is change color ramp from linear because it's gradually changing from black to white. I want to change that to constant. And I'll bring that together. And I've already figured out the changes I need to make to this. So I'm going to click on the black one. And under position, I want to change that to 0.375. Then I'm going to click on white and I'm going to change it to 0.5. Next thing I'm going to do is on the noise texture, I'm going to change scale to 1.1. I'm going to change detail to 4.7. I'm going to change roughness to 0 0.6. I'm going to change distortion to 9.6. And under the mapping node, I'm going to change rotation in X to 3, rotation in Y to 20, rotation in Z to minus 30, scale to 0 0.05, Y scale to 0.4, Z scale to 1.1. And you'll notice now that I can't see the moon behind the clouds because even though we have the transparent BSDF, I do need to make a change to the material. So with cloud selected, I go to the material tab. And if I click under settings, you can see I have blend mode opaque. I'm going to change that to alpha hashed. And now you can see the moon behind here. The only thing we need to do now is animate it. So if I click on my timeline and bring it up a little bit, I'm going to turn on auto keyframe by clicking this round button here on the timeline. Now we're going to animate this by changing the X rotation in the mapping node. So if I left click and drag on that, you can see the clouds start moving. So I hit undo. So I'm going to right click on the X rotation and hit insert keyframe. You can see now it's yellow. So I'm going to drag my playhead to 250. And I'm going to change the rotation to 4. And since I had auto keyframe on, it automatically changed that keyframe. So now if I hit play, you see those clouds are slowly moving. It's hard to see because it's so slow. 
So let me pause that with my space bar. I'm going to go back to 250, highlight that keyframe, and change the number to 7. Now if I go back to 1 and hit play, let me drag this down, increase the size. So you can see those clouds slowly moving. One issue with them is the interpolation mode. It's currently set to Bezier by default. And what that means is that when an animation starts, it starts slow, then it speeds up, and then it kind of maintains a constant speed in the middle, and then it starts slowing down when it gets to the end, because that's how objects typically work. Think of a car moving. But we don't want that with clouds, because they are going to be in constant motion. So I'm going to left click and drag on my timeline to select both keyframes. I'm going to right click and go to interpolation mode, hover over that, and we get this pop-up menu. And I'm going to change it to linear. Now if I go back to one and hit play, now the clouds are moving at a constant speed. Okay, so the last thing I want to show is that if I go to render and render this image, see now the moon is not behind the clouds and that's not what I want. So you fix this by going to the Layer Properties tab here, and under Passes Data, you need to assign it a Z pass. So I click on that to enable it. Now I've hit Render again, you can see the moon is behind the clouds. So let me hit Play one more time. Okay, now these are moving too fast, so to change that, I would decrease the value in the rotation X field. So in the animation, they probably won't even be noticeable. Most people will be paying attention to the characters. However, I just wanted to figure out a way to do that. So I thought this process worked pretty well. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe if so, so I can continue growing the channel and creating tutorials like this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see if I can help figure out any answers you need. And in the next video, like I said, I'm going to create buildings between Batman and the clouds, and those will be in perspective, and I'll be using the guide functions in Blender Grease Pencil to do that. So again, hopefully you found this helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.